Hey. You guys just came on listening Keep to me singing. singing. Keep I did singing. It all for the nookie. Hey, the nookie. Hey. <laughs> that that I don't know. That might be for somebody else's time. <laughs> I hope that that made somebody giggle. Maybe a giggle. We want to talk about a topic right now that I'm going to talk about a topic. I want to talk about a topic. Um, it's been an interesting week for some mm-hmm. of you, maybe who don't go on the news or on social media, which I understand because Danae just said to me, how come you only check your social media once a day? Uh, I don't know if anybody saw the Bumble um, advertising I just want to iterate. That's because you're not being a very good meme friend. I will that's send true. you memes that I would like you to respond to in a timely fashion. No, nope. but I digress. I just, I don't, I, I don't. I don't like it. If I don't have to be on it, I won't. Um, but yeah, so the Bumble campaign that just came out, which is whew, whew, putting everybody Bumble. in an uproar. Um, and rightfully and so. Rightfully so. So for those of you who have not seen it, Bumble just did like a relaunch of their brand. And I don't know <laughs> what they were trying to say about themselves but this isn't all of them so basically it's a national campaign it's outdoor it's social it's you know all Mm. all medias basically and this is not all of the headlines but i'll read you a few of the headlines from some of the billboards um let's see you know full well a vow of celibacy is not the answer thou shalt not give up on dating and become a nun A Mm. vow of celibacy is not the answer. And then I saw another one that's not on this thing I'm reading. That was um, of a guy and a girl. And it said, we've changed so you don't have to. Uh, uh. I kind of, oh, Bumble has changed that now men are able to reach out to women is what that's about, right? Yeah. Um, Which is what they're saying, right? That's the kind of like overt message. But the covert message, I think, while everything's going on out there in the world, is as they have this kind of the man's face is kind of centered in that specific one Mm -hmm. a lot of women are taking it as like oh so basically you're telling men they don't need to be changing and growing and you know all the things that women have been talking about basically so obviously there's been some backlash Mm -hmm. people are pissed women are pissed um i've seen the bumble ceo and the head of marketing on a couple interviews kind of apologizing saying they missed the mark um, saying it's that, you know, understatement. <laughs> saying that all <laughs> lifestyles, you know, celibacy being that, uh, you know, are valid and they weren't trying to minimize celibacy as a lifestyle anyway. Um, but this comes off the heels of a lot of people in the U S just finding out about a movement that's been going on in Korea for the last five plus years, um, called the four B movement. And so, I'm going to butcher this because you would think with a Korean partner, I would know more Korean by now, but basically the Are four B's. Are you about B's, to speak Korean? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I, won't, I won't do that to you guys. It's like, what? It would be amazing. <laughs> Unless I'm like, get my, <laughs> my drink ready. I'm like, let's do this. Someday. Unless about to sing to us in Korean, y'all. Someday. Um, but it stands for, there's four words in Korean that all start with B, right? And I'm going to butcher it. See if you remember the fourth one because I was trying to remember this yesterday. So basically mm. it's like, um, no marriage, no children, no heterosexual sex, and no, there was one was other dating. One. Maybe it was just no dating men or something. No, it was like no heterosexual dating. Yeah. Um, and the reason why, even though this has been going on for like five plus years, it's kind of finally gaining traction or like people are hearing about it here is because there was a huge new news article that just got put out that talked about how 150 schools do not have a first grade class this year. In South Korea. In South Korea. Okay. And here's what I will say. I told you this today, but my mother-in-law, John's mom, I did not talk to her about this conversation. She came to me totally unprompted and said something Mm -hmm. about how her government, she said, in my country, the government is trying to pay women to have children. And I was like, (laughs) oh, interesting. Why is that? I knew what she was talking about, right? And so we started talking about this movement. And I was like, oh, shit, if this 77-year-old woman knows about this movement. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I don't know. It feels like while they feel separate, they don't feel separate. Those two things happening at the same time-ish in the States anyway. uh, It feels like a larger thing is happening. Thoughts? Well, 
go. A larger <laughs> thing is absolutely happening. I feel like you sent me a bunch of um, content and articles on this the other night, and I was like a giddy little girl in a candy store because this to me is just such unbelievable um, like evidence of the rise of the feminine principle happening in real time in our lifetime. And like, this is a larger conversation about what I mean when I say that, but you know, you and I've had conversations recently about how struck I've been by the disconnect between, you know, and I'm obviously speaking anecdotally on like things that I see on social media. And I'm sure that we, live within a very particular vacuum anyway. So there's a, a certain way that we hear people speaking to conversations that like, I don't want to minimize that when I say this. And there's a way that men speak to what they feel like is happening between mm. men and women dating in relationships and the way that women speak about what they feel like is happening. And it's like, are we on the same planet? Because it is a vastly different perception from men and women in heteronormative dynamics and what they think is happening. And what I hear men saying is, you know, it is like really hard to find women that are interested in like a normal guy. They want to date like the 5%, like most powerful, most wealthy, like tallest, like whatever qualifications of man. And it's just like really hard out here or it's not even worth it because dating is such a pain in the ass. So we're just going to like sort of tap out. Mm. Um, and then what I hear from women about the dating zeitgeist is more in alignment with, it's not actually that men are competing with like the top 5%. It's that they're competing with how good it feels to be by ourselves at this point, because the level My of piece. disappointment. Yeah. Sorry, but, um, yeah that I continuously have experienced in the realm of dating. And, you know, like, I, I don't know if you remember this, but I posted like the one time I did a, what are those things called? Um, stitch. Thank you. V. <laughs> thank you for being my brain. <laughs> like the one time I posted a stitch on TikTok, it went viral and it was with Dr. Peter Galloway, I think is his name. Um, but he was talking about this thing about like how men aren't earning what they used to earn. And it's like making it like really difficult for young men to, he, mm -hmm. he used the word mate, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but to find partnership. And what I said was, I think, you know, women aren't looking for men within a certain income bracket. What they're looking for are men who know themselves well and who have a solid sense of self, perhaps men who go to therapy. This is like the thing that like excites women like nothing else. And it was mm. fascinating, even in the comments section, like thousands and thousands of comments of women being like, hell yes, that's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. Men being like, you don't know anything. That's not what's really happening. And y'all are going to die alone with your cats. And I was like, wait. It's the like, jump, the jump to you're gonna die alone with your cat. I'm like, I, I was just like, what? What do my cats have to do with this? First of all, first of all, you don't have any cats, so what do your it's cats? Just have like, to do but it's like we're not interested in what, like, if the men and listen, there was a small percentage of men who were like listening and in dialogue course, with the women. We're not taking, we're not using the term all, right? Certainly, but I'm like, gentlemen, look at what the women are saying here. They're trying saying to tell you what I'm saying is how they feel. You're mm -hmm. saying that's not true. That's not what women want. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure all the women are saying that's what they want. So. It's it's like we are determined to not hear you. Do you know what I mean? Which to me is like fascinating. Yeah, there's um, I guess what I can speak to is from the experience that I've had within my own relationship, mm -hmm. being with a man who obviously he himself is a therapist, but also, you know, just this idea of like being committed to evolution and growth. And I think what I've heard him talk about, because he has struggled Mm -hmm. as we all have <laughs> mm -hmm. with some of this stuff. And I think what he has talked about is um, having a really hard time feeling like, and I'm obviously paraphrasing what he's talked about, but really like having a hard time feeling as though it's like all men are shit. They're the ones that need to do the work. It's all on them. Women don't need to do anything different. They don't need to do any work. It's all up to men. Like his, his, kind of push back. And I think what he has talked about with the men in his like groups and his circles and why they struggle is because it feels that's what he said anyway, that it feels like it's just completely being put on them. Like you guys are the reason for everything that's wrong in the world right now. So like fix it. Right. And, um, 
I think understandably, and we've talked about this, you know, um, people can't grow through shame. Like it doesn't, it doesn't help. It doesn't actually give them an opportunity to grow and evolve, which is why you and I talk about the cancel culture as being so unhelpful, right? Because we're not giving people an opportunity to actually learn from what's happening. We're just shaming them and shutting them down. Mm -hmm. And I think he would maybe not argue is the right word, but he might argue that like, it's, it feels like a lot of the rhetoric is very shaming. And so that's why I think he thinks a lot of men are not listening because they're almost like not capable of listening because they've been so shamed and shut down. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, to me, that feels like the biggest yes and ever. Mm -hmm. Like I would agree with what John is saying to an extent. And if we had not been living in a society where up until a very short amount of time ago, women decided to partner and be in relationships mm-hmm. a lot of times because they were seen as like property and didn't have, didn't have a, choice. a choice. Like if mm-hmm. we're, if we're like on an equal playing field and then we're sort of like, like to me, that's a little bit like, you know, I have a problem with affirmative action because I shouldn't have to like, you know, make up for things that I didn't create, of course. And that's true. And it's not a level playing field. Right. So if women have been in this game and they've had to be in partnerships a lot of times because of survival. And now they're saying, I don't have to do that. And so if I'm going to be in a relationship with someone, a lot of my healing and reclaiming of myself is like, I'm only going to be in relationship with someone when it is like adding something to my life. And, you know, I saw this meme somewhere where it's like women, a lot of times will like choose to not be in partnership. Like that's just not as common of a thing for men to be like, I'm just not interested in partnering. And so like, again, I agree with what John is saying about like the shaming doesn't like support people in like calling them forward and coming into the conversation. And I think, you know, for the majority of men, if we're talking about like the macro, it's like women are sort of like, okay, we don't care. Yeah. Then don't come to the conversation. Right. Then don't be invested in knowing yourself well because here's what. Like, <laughs> like we don't, and this is like I do think where men really struggle is hearing we don't actually need men. Now, I don't think that's true, but I do think that is the attitude that a lot of women at this point are taking. It's mm-hmm. like if I'm going to carry the majority of the emotional labor, if I am going to feel like I don't have an emotional um connection with you because you know, maybe because of your societal program, you are so stoic and checked out from your own emotional landscape. If I have to do all of the things anyway, I can't tell you how often I hear women Mm -hmm. say, if I have to do all the things anyway, which that is a reality in a lot of people's Mm -hmm. partnership dynamics, then why do I need you here? Mm -hmm. And a lot of women are saying, I don't actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting because I was talking to him yesterday about everything that you and I are talking about. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. Like I'm not, it's not a new movement. It's been going on in Korea for a while, South Korea for a while. But, uh, the fact that it's like being talked about here and, you know, women are talking about that specific movement and kind of adopting the tenets of the movement. Um, anyway, he was saying, you know, what's, he's like, what I worry about is, and he's like, I guess I'm thinking about my daughter. He's like, I worry about the backlash that's going to inevitably ensue. And I said, yeah, but here's the thing. We're already witnessing the backlash. It's already happening in legislation across the country, across the world, really, right? Like very conservative leaders are being elected all over the globe, not just here, Um, you know, and, and bodily autonomy is being completely stripped away in so many places. And I was like, so in my opinion, that is the backlash. I mean, that is the response to the feminine rising up and saying like, we've had enough, right? Like it's time for patriarchy to evolve. Like we're done with this nonsense. Right. And he was like, yeah, no, he, I mean, he gets that. He's like, and, um, let me back up a little bit. So the reason why he was saying that is I was telling him that I was watching this guy on TikTok who's a historian and a doctor of something. I'm horrible with this stuff. You always remember everybody's names, everybody's credentials. I'm like, you know, some guy's a doctor. (laughs) Um, anyway, he was talking about this term incels. And I thought it was really interesting. And so he said the term incels and like what incel actually means, he's not new. He's like, we've actually had this idea going way back in history. And he said, but the, the reason why it feels different right now is because this is the first time in recorded history that societies haven't had, um, I'm butchering what he's saying, but basically like a purpose or like something to do with the incels. So he said, 
there's always forever and ever been a group of men that for whatever reason, whether they didn't have the financial means, whether they just weren't attractive, whether they, you know, they might've had a mental instability, you know, instability, which like back in the day, they would have just been like, either lock them up or whatever, right? Like they didn't care. He's like, what we used to do is we used to take these men who couldn't get a mate. He also and used that word too. Involuntary celibate, celibate, like just so like people that aren't familiar with incel know what you're talking about. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Right. People who <clears throat> involuntary celibate, right? So a man who for not his own choosing cannot find a mate, right? And that's the word that he used too. But what we would do is we would take them and we would put them in things like the military and we would say, go out and conquer. And he said, like, if you look at history, he was saying that even like the Vikings, like most of the men that were called Vikings were incels. Mm -hmm. He's like, we used to take their anger and their resentment and their frustration and whatever. And we would put them on a mission and we would say, go out and basically slaughter people. Mm -hmm. And what he was saying is that for a lot of those incels back then, the mission was, there was like a dangling carrot that you might have an opportunity to get a mate because you would go to another area and you would conquer it and you would basically rape and pillage and whatever. And so it was like a dangling carrot for them to join these causes where they might die because the, they might also get a mate. Right. And he was like, this is the first time basically in history that we don't have that. No, and he was like, true. well, I just think it's interesting. I was like, that's, a, I'm like, well, a, that's just factually incorrect. John. I'm sorry. Well, tell me why you there were that. matriarchal cultures and that was not the case when women well, not were forever sort of and like ever. Amen. I'm just talking about in the patriarchal systems that we've had oh, up until this like, point. Well, I'm sorry. That's just no, no. Not I'm not fair. talking about when matriarchy was a thing. I'm talking about within patriarchal cultures. Yeah. And patriarchy incels, is They dying used to use incels is what I'm before saying. Before our eyes. And yeah. it's just like even I just the that idea was a that fascinating that, like, kind of historical. The that carrot like, oh. that we're dangling is you will get a mate. Yeah. Just like you will get a slave. We're just not like saying you will it's get okay. He I'm wasn't just you are. It. I'm just saying like <laughs> it's time to evolve beyond yeah. what this has been for thousands of years. Yes, we're well aware patriarchy has been unbelievably like maladaptive ways of being as humans for a very long time. It's dying. And what we're seeing with women, um, you know, in these 4B movements and men acting out as they are, yes, you're absolutely right, is the fish on land thrashing around yep. before it dies. But this is us witnessing the death of patriarchy. Something else is being born. And I think it is evolve or die time for my brothers. And listen, I am in such full support of like what is so unbelievably beautiful about the masculine. I don't think we've had any sort of models of what no. actual masculinity in its fullest embodiment looks like. Because even a man who needs some sort of a carrot dangled in front of totally. it is such a distortion of mm -hmm. what masculinity is. Like we yeah. should want better for our brothers from my perspective. Like that's just we're better than this. And I think everybody's sort of response is like, well, it's going to be like the, like even Mikey was like, well, we're going to be like in Handmaid's Tale. And I'm like, we've yeah. got to like stop with this, like comply or die. Like that is the only option. There is another option that like just believes in our ability to rise mm -hmm. as like souls. And not that like, we are just like these barbaric egoic, you know, bodies that like only can sort of, um, identify with like our fears. I just think like we got to believe in something better being possible for us. Yeah. I mean, I think that I, I, but I also think that you can hold kind of both. Like you can hold the fear of what we're, what we're watching happen right now, which is the extinction burst, which is very real. Now you and I might not be individually experiencing what that very real pushback is because we live in a state where that's not actually happening but it is happening and women are actually in this moment feeling the pushback, right? So it's a bit of a yes and even to what you're saying. I also believe in what can be. And I do believe that as souls, we are evolving, like it or not, right? For everybody listening, like we're evolving, but there are people who are currently in this moment experiencing what that backlash looks like. And I think that was just maybe what Mikey was saying or what, like what John was saying is like, there's just a fear of like the backlash is going to get bigger, just like we talk about extinction bursts, right? Before it dies down and before we are able to evolve. And so I think, I think understandably, he was just naming a fear. Like I, I, I just worry about what that will look like. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's fair. You know, it is going to be scary and we can still hold our ground obviously and believe in more. 
Um, well, but I think fear always gets bigger when we focus our energy there. And what Mikey said that was like, to me, he was like, good for women. Like, mm -hmm. that's like a big thing of like, you know, so often what we've talked about is there's a lack of discernment that we have to take responsibility for. And I was joking with you. Like, I feel like my gay friends are always like, just stop having sex with men. Just yeah. stop. And I think that is what the Bumble movement is in response to, is a lot of women are realizing this is like a little bit us being complicit in our own suffering. Like, we are literally having sex with men that could not care less about mm -hmm. our bodily having autonomy being stripped from us, right? Yep. So if you don't care, why should I be in yeah. a partnership with you? Like that is not equal partnership in and of itself. And I think that's the responsibility and the hundred percent we have to take. And I think mm -hmm. it's beautiful, like deep bows to our sisters in South Korea. And that to me, like even the Bumble statement, like why can we not be in relationships with men and it not be sexual? Sexual. Yep. Why can we not be in um relationships with men where we have like deep respect and love and connection with one another and nobody's taking their pants off. It's mm -hmm. just so objectifying of one another as humans. And I know like there are those that will not agree with me, but I think it's like there's a way that we have used pleasure and like immediate gratification as a way to continue to make one another objects versus like really seeing one another as souls. And I think that's to me what is so exciting about this like movement, it's like, no, like we can actually make the choice to not do that. Well, and I think you and I would argue that a lot of that using pleasure is a way to hide. It's a way to not mm -hmm. have to be with the discomfort of actually being with yourself, of actually having to be alone, right? Of actually whatever that looks like. We do use some of that pleasure as a distraction and it's not to say that all sex is bad and also, I mean, obviously that's not what we're saying, but I, I think it really does call into question your relationship with sex. Like that's all it is, right? Like get really clear, get really clear about why you're seeking it out, what the intention is, what are you getting from it, right? Is it filling you up? Is it not? Like, is it a form of self-abandonment, right? Like all of these things that you and I talk about, even in like codependency recovery, we could say that even like the act of casual sex could be part of that. Now, it could not be if it you is. feel like <laughs> you have I'm joking. a different relationship to it. I, I say there is no one thing for everybody, period. There are different humans. People have different experiences. I don't believe that every single person that's having casual sex is self-abandoning. I don't believe that. I never will. I just don't believe the all or nothing argument. But I do believe that everyone needs to really sit with themselves and their relationship and take time alone to really understand what that is because that's yes. what we don't do and we don't do that the conversation we are have not been ready for up to this point is the way that people use sex as an incredible way to avoid actual oh, intimacy yeah. because yeah. we are intimate physically so i have made like this mm -hmm. you know idea in my mind that somehow that means that I am close to you. And I can't tell you the number of people that do act out in unbelievably codependent ways, not actually having conversations with people because mm -hmm. they're just attempting to maintain the attachment at all costs. And that is where we use sex like mm -hmm. a drug. And that is the hill I'm willing to die on. I'm sorry, but it's fast. Yeah. I mean, I think so too. And also I think that um, not all sex, like not all casual sex. I think like if I'm even thinking about myself, um, I wasn't seeking out intimacy with some of those people. Like that wasn't, that wasn't what I was looking for. I wasn't, that wasn't part of it. So, um, I still think it's a yes and I'm always going to do the yes and when it comes to sex. And I know that you and I don't agree on this stuff all the way, which is fine. I just am so hesitant to ever be like, it is all this or it's all that. I just don't, when it comes to sex, that just makes me really uncomfortable because, I don't know. I just think it's too new. I think sex, human sexuality is too nuanced for that. But I think that in this specific topic around women and patriarchy, that is something that we as women need to own is the ways in which we have been complicit in some of this shit. And I think that um, this conversation coming out of Korea is exactly that. It is a, the women in Korea said, if y'all aren't going to change, we're bowing out. Yeah, we're tapping out. There's... We're not taking part in it. If you think about for women, and I agree with you to an extent, but I think there's a ton of gaslighting and lying to ourselves that we do. And there's a lot of ways that what I see with women a lot 
is women have casual sex as a way to experience external validation. But when you break down the actual sex they're actually having, they're not having good sex with people that they meet casually so much of the time. And I think a lot of the reclaiming of our pleasure has to be like, am I really doing this because I'm really actually enjoying this sex? Or is this a way that I feel good when I feel seen, chosen, validated in this moment? And then on the other side of it, there is those feelings of like, I don't know, other things that come along with that, you know? It's just a fascinating time to yes, be alive and. because all the <laughs> all of the rules are changing. And it's yeah. like we don't that's get to be true. victims of the choices that we make anymore. It's like mm-hmm. you don't have to do anything, but mm-hmm. that means then what are you gonna choose? Right. Right. And and what that means is there's gonna be some discomfort. Like you we all as beings, every one of us, man, woman doesn't matter. Part of this evolution is all of us getting more comfortable being uncomfortable and realizing the ways that we look outside of ourselves to tap some of that anxiety and let some of that steam off. Right. And I don't care if we're talking about sex. I don't care if we're talking about drugs. I don't care if we're talking about, you know, people pleasing. I don't care what it is. Like we always say, it's all the same shit. Right. Um, what are you using as your release valve and why do you need a release valve? Like, what are you not willing to sit with? Right. What tools have you not been given? That's not necessarily your fault. None of us were raised with those fucking tools. Right. Once you realize that, then it's an opportunity for you to start establishing those tools, establishing those practices. How do I sit with discomfort instead of just going for the release valve, right? And no one is saying it's easy. That does take work, but it is possible. That work is possible if you are kind of willing to do the work itself. Yeah. None of this is anybody's fault, but it is your responsibility Mm -hmm. because it's your life now. So at some point it's like, even like blaming the patriarchy, blaming like men, like blaming whoever. It's like, it's it's your responsibility to make these choices for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and also I want people listening to know that clearly we know this idea of like taking responsibility is very nuanced. We're not talking about situations where there's abuse. We're not talking about situations where, you know, somebody's been, um, you know, financially manipulated and controlled into a situation where there's a lot of digging themselves out of a hole that has to happen. No one is saying that like you just blink your eyes and you make a different choice. There are some people that are into situations that obviously are extenuating circumstances. And Danae and I still feel like there are ways broadly that we can be having conversations differently as women that up until very recently we weren't able to or willing to have. Um, and some of those conversations are hard to have and we get that. Yep. Yep. Well, if y'all haven't heard about it, check out the movement. I'm telling you what, keep your, keep your eye on that one. Part of me feels like I told you the other day when I was like sending you all these TikToks, I was like, and this is why we're trying to ban TikTok here because I swear to God, it's like the only way sometimes that I'm able to go into some of these rabbit holes and hmm. find like information that is not being put on any other <laughs> source it's just this is just the beginning and i am here for it what a time to be alive (laughs) fucking love it it's wild it's the best Mm. anyway let us know what y'all think when we post us we'll be curious to know your thoughts